Welcome to episode 124 of the Startup Show. Today I'm here with Carlos in Bern at Retinai and we are talking about artificial intelligence, his PhD in machine learning and ophthalmology and also why it's so important to talk about your idea. So make sure to stay tuned. Welcome to episode 124 of the Startup Show. Today we are here in Bern, the capital of Switzerland, and I'm very excited to meet with a medtech, health tech, whatever you want to call it, startup here in Bern. So Carlos, welcome to the show. It's a great pleasure Thank you. to have you here. You know, as usual on the Startup Show, the entrepreneurs get about a minute and a half to introduce themselves to my audience. So we all know, especially the investors out there, um, who is actually sitting with me here today. My name is Carlos Schiller. I'm co-founder and CEO of Retina Medical. I'm also a PhD in machine learning and medical imaging in ophthalmology. So I was doing a PhD for four years between different universities in Switzerland. So I started at EPFL, but it was also part of University of Lausanne, University of Bern. And I even had the opportunity to spend a year at Imperial College in London. Yeah. When I returned back, I decided to stay in Switzerland because I'm not originally from Switzerland. I gathered some friends in order to create the company. I like Taekwondo. Okay. I, I am an amateur uh, violin player and I love chess. So I like <laughs> strategy, all of these things I love. Yes, I used to do karate for a very long time, but stopped it a while ago. Number one, I want to understand, you know, you also had, let's say, this idea of entrepreneurship mm -hmm. and that you felt like this is like your calling. But what is it that fascinates you about this whole idea of entrepreneurship? So I think it's the opportunity to be able to develop an idea that you've been thinking on for a long time yeah. and get a lot more people involved and a lot of people aboard. So imagine in our case, we are developing technologies in the field of artificial intelligence. So bringing all these people into your idea of changing the way healthcare and artificial intelligence combines forces together. Mm -hmm. That's what I love. Sure. I mean, you also wrote something on your LinkedIn. It's called Lover of Entrepreneuring Science. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, is this is this is what you what you meant or I think it's bringing an innovation to become a business case yeah. it's really complicated sometimes you are doing a phd and then you are dealing with a different kind of a scenario so you are looking at research problems but most of these research problems they won't become a company afterwards there mm -hmm. is no direct application for me during my phd i was always having a look at every single problem i was trying to solve on how to transform it into a startup idea yeah. something that could help people yeah that that was very important for me retina maybe you can give us a short brief uh, introduction or let's say your elevator pitch so we all know what you actually do here at retina we are developing healthcare solutions to prevent patients from vision loss yeah. as soon as possible. And this translates into a very simple solution. So imagine you are 60 years old mm -hmm. and then you want to know whether you have an eye disease or not. So the typical pathway today is you go to the general practitioner, then the general practitioner is going to take some time to go there. You have to wait and they're going to do an eye scan and then you're going to get an appointment with the ophthalmologist. Then afterwards, three to six months down the line, you are going to detect that you have a specific eye disease yeah. and you have already lost your eyesight beyond recovery. What we want to do is we want to introduce a way to do a very early detection of these diseases. So instead of waiting three to six months, you get to know about this disease on the same day. In order to do that, we are bringing this solution to opticians or, or to even to pharmacies. You will have a, like a machine in the future where you will be able to know whether something is happening to you mm -hmm. and you will know on the spot. Okay. Of course, there are a lot of regulation issues and <laughs> yes. it's not as easy as it sounds, but we are working on it. Retina, I mean, you, you hear the AI in there, which is probably one also, um, when you look at the slogan of your company, uh, you have artificial intelligence in there. Beyond it being a buzzword, I am curious to hear, you know, what is exactly the AI that you use within, let's say, your technology? Okay, so maybe I can do two things. I, yeah. I will explain first about the name. So retina has different meanings. On the one side, you have the artificial intelligence yeah. at the end, okay? But at the same time, I stands for I. Yes. So it's the actually e -E. this <laughs> kind of combination we thought yes. it was very elegant and, and we actually stick to the name straight from the beginning. How are we applying AI 
in the company. So we are evaluating these medical images. So the, the clinician is going to acquire a medical scan of the eye, and yeah. then they are going to look at the image. If you have several sessions, because the diseases we are diagnosing or supporting to diagnose are chronic diseases, meaning that they will degenerate over time, mm -hmm. and the clinician needs a lot of information in order to make a decision. So they have to look at multiple sessions and then aggregate all this information. With AI, if the quality of the evaluation is good enough, you are able to aggregate all this data and present it to the ophthalmology. So for instance, doing analysis of the image, looking for pathological biomarkers that are connected to the development of a disease, all of this goes together. At the end of the day, we want to simplify the life of the doctor mm -hmm. because there is a lot of tedious tasks involved in the daily evaluation of medical scans, we want to simplify it as much as possible. What's definitely interesting, you know, is, and, and because, you know, I know one of your advisors on the, on, the, on the advisory board, but one of the key questions that I like to ask is about your team. How would you qualify your team as, let's say, you know, the, the A team that you are able to actually bring it to the next level? The team is always a complicated question. I was very lucky to find my co-founders, so I believe that one of the most important things you have in a startup is the yeah. team. If you don't have the right team or if you cannot trust completely your team, you're not going to be able to move forward. Then on top of that, depending on the field you are actually bringing your innovation to, it's very important to get to know a key opinion leaders, so people that are extremely well-known or that they know a lot about the specific field. I mean, they may not be the biggest names, mm -hmm. but it's very important to know the people that already buy your idea very early on, that they trust that what you're doing is the solution that is going to bring, in this case, ophthalmology to the next level. Mm -hmm. I believe Switzerland is ideal to find also research institutions where you can bring something which maybe started as a research project into really a business case afterwards. So the team is, to me, the most important part. Yes, but like what well, you didn't answer me, if your team is the, the A team. I think it's the A team. <laughs> I, I no, mean, but the why? The why? I mean. <laughs> so maybe I can, I can bring up another story. So yes. three years ago, we were doing the PhD together. Yeah. This, this is really important. So we had the opportunity to check whether we could work together for several years. Yes. Uh, it was four to five years together before we even started the startup. Then three years ago, it was Sachs Zurich 2014, we decided to go on a crazy weekend spending 48 hours coding in order to develop an idea. And then we came up with a social network. Then the name of this social network was called Typo, and it was a geolocalized anonymous message board, meaning that you, let's say that we are here, then you actually write a text message, and then the next person who comes to this location is going to be able to see that the text <laughs> okay. message. And this text message is going to vanish over time. And then the idea would be that only the most important messages stay. And th then we, we had a very complicated 48 hours where we endured a lot of challenges and where we solved a lot of issues. We even made it to the final. And then we realized we could work together. Right. And that we were, even if we came from similar backgrounds, well, we were complementary. So the way we are and the way we face problems is complementary and that is ideal. That's the reason when I finish the PhD and, and then I just... Now, when you look at, let's say, the vision you have, let's say, for the upcoming five, ten years, where would you see Retinai then? In five years, what you will have is the opportunity to get your eyes evaluated very easily. So, to get to know which is your eye health, yeah. wherever you want, for a fraction of the current price. On your smartphone? On your smartphone, <laughs> or, or, or at least you can check it from your smartphone. Right. Okay, very good. So one of the key questions, I mean, you probably expected it is kind of the business model. So are you, I assume you're probably either selling some kind of technology or you're licensing. Have you ever put in some thoughts how you, you want to monetize? Monetize question is extremely important for investors, especially. So we have a vision, which yeah. is actually uh, developing this early screening programs in ophthalmology. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, you cannot just go there. So we are trying to create intermediate business cases that are actually successful on their own. Yeah. So what we have seen is that uh, the new technologies, the new algorithms that we are developing are already very useful to hospitals and research laboratories all over the world that are doing research in ophthalmology. So we are providing services to these people. That's one of the business units. Then we have another business unit which relies a lot on licensing of our technology. And there are some very big names in the industry that would like to have this technology in their devices. So those are the, the early sources of revenues that are going to help us build 
the subscription platform that we want to develop one day. Okay, so, you know, um, one of the things that I'm curious and I'm always like interested in hearing from the entrepreneurs that are, let's say, in a specific vertical of the startup ecosystem is about the trends within that ecosystem. So let's say you're in a health tech, I guess, med tech area. Um, and I would be very curious to hear more about, let's say, what you see um, in a current state. And the follow-up question will be, what about the future? But for now, what do you see, let's say, here, let's say in Bern or in Switzerland in general, in the med tech, health tech sector? I think that specifically for the case of Bern is an untapped market in the med tech field. So let me explain it very easily. So you have the University of Bern. I don't know if you know, but the master in biomedical engineering from the University of Bern is actually top 20 in the world. Okay. And didn't know. <laughs> well, I'm also more business side. But. So I think, I think this, is, this is an opportunity that we have to capture. We believe that Bern could be like a next, maybe, maybe in the future, but it could be a pole for tech development in Switzerland. In terms of the company, what we see is that we are now in the vertical of healthcare, specifically in medtech. But some of the technologies that we are using, specifically some of these algorithms, are a bit horizontal. Yeah. So maybe jumping to other fields or even to different image modalities would be the first step. Then second, to different fields. So at the moment we are in ophthalmology, but we know that the same technology is actually useful in dermatology, mm -hmm. audiology, even cardiology. Okay. So that would be like different applications of the same approach. And then afterwards, uh, we believe that artificial intelligence is bringing a lot of solutions to different fields, semiconductors, high performance yeah. computing. We believe that there is a lot of opportunities to expand there. Sure. I mean, like a few weeks ago, I had um, Philip on the show. He's the CEO and co-founder of Online Doctor, which is, a, okay. yeah. have you heard about them? Yeah. So he said, you know, like basically like we're moving into a direction where a lot of things you will be able to do that the doctor's interaction over your smartphone. Mm -hmm. How do you see that development? Is this something that you see coming also? And I would say also from a patient's perspective, is this something the patient really wants? I think it's something you have to educate the patient on doing. Yeah. So when you show the real value, the real added value of having control over your health on your smartphone, which is the door to the world of internet as of today, you have your smartphone and if you want to communicate with the world, that's the thing you use. And if you have the opportunity to also have a doctor on the same spot, it's going to democratize healthcare. I believe that uh, there is a need from the society, especially in certain countries, sure. to be able to democratize healthcare, especially if the technology is there. So you will be able to take control of your healthcare and this is going to happen, absolutely. Depending on which kind of evaluation, that I'm not entirely sure, but at yes. least your your pulse oximetry, pulse, all this information yes. you will have complete control sure. over. When you look at, let's say, Switzerland um, on a more global level, do you see that we have a chance to really position ourselves uh, as a top leader within medtech? I, I'm thinking of, for example, Basel, where you have Roche and you have like really like the big companies out there. Do you think we can do that also with uh, more companies? Absolutely. I think, I think Switzerland is very lucky to have great institutions yes. as, as the Swiss Institutes of Technology, so EPFL, ETH, there is a lot of knowledge around. And I believe that one of the things that is going to uh, define the economies of the future is your investment in research, yeah. in research and development. I think Switzerland is among the top countries in this regard as of today. Traditionally, Switzerland had a pharma-like industry, like a very important pharma-like industry. But I also believe that medtech is going to play a very important role, especially prosthetics, also ophthalmology. There are many different device manufacturers. I think it's a wonderful opportunity. And I think Switzerland is going to stay in the top. Sure. When we take it back a little bit to Switzerland, uh, you won Venture Kick, a significant amount of uh, money. It sounds like a lot of money, but if you think of it long term, it's probably not enough. But still, I would like to hear a little bit more about your, let's say, how was the process of winning it, like from the moment you applied till you got it, but also like, you know, post winning, was there any kind of like help or uh, do you feel like this was actually something that added value to your startup beyond, let's say, the finances? I think what Venture Kick is providing mostly is the opportunity to show yourself to show what you're doing and why it's important and relevant to somebody. The process, I, th I think it's very helpful. It's, it's a great initiative in Switzerland. For us, there was a very big difference between the second uh, and the third. So the first venture kick happened one year ago, more or less. Mm -hmm. And then by then we had different ideas. So it was more or less the same, but it was not as refined. Then on the second venture kick, it was a bit tough. So when we went out, we were thinking that, okay, we are not gonna make it. This was not our best presentation. And 
there are still many unanswered questions to ourselves because at the end of the day you need to be able to answer those questions yeah. to make a successful business case. Then actually the last venture kick was two months ago but by then I think the learning that we did in these six yes. months between July second venture kick and the last one was the, the significant one. Sure. That was the moment when we realized that all these independent business units yeah. can work. Actually where we realized that this idea could actually bring bring value to the people. Then in terms of money, it's 130,000. Yeah. In Switzerland, this money doesn't last so much. <laughs> so you still need to, to either create something very quickly and do something more on the IT field and grow very fast. But this is going to help you by giving a seal of approval. I think Swiss ecosystem has developed a very strong seal of approval ecosystem yes. where when you go through venture kick and you pass the three kicks, that's already a seal of approval. Yes. When you go to CTI coaching, now it's called Inno Swiss, and then you go throughout the entire process, this is a learning process, it's a training process, and it's also another seal of approval. Yeah. Each of them is helping you develop a more I would say, reliable, or you are increasing the chances of success of your startup. And I think that's very important. It has helped us a lot. So always before the show, I post some kind of banner on various social media channels, such as uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and even on my WhatsApp group. And I ask the audience if they have any specific question to you. So basically, the, my friend uh, Julia Weissenberg asked the following. What hardware is needed and will it be possible to do remote diagnosis or use mostly consumer hardware one day? I think that's going to happen. So there is a very big push by big market leaders to develop artificial intelligence, which is accessible with the current hardware. We are developing also solutions on that regard because not every single device is AI capable yeah. at reasonable time levels. So I think that in the future, device manufacturers, Google is working on that. And I would say that pretty much every single device manufacturer is working on that. So within two, three years, we will, all the hardware that is going to come anew is going to have these AI capabilities mm -hmm. on the smartphone, on any device, pretty much. But I hope that makes sense to you. So really, I hope uh, that answers your it's, question. It's going, to, it's going to happen. So you will, be, you will be able to do artificial intelligence on your smartphone or to run algorithms that, to support yes. the diagnosis or all of it on your smartphone. So the first one is, uh, finish the sentence, my biggest mistake as a startup is, or was? To not explain my idea faster to people. I was always very skeptical of telling what I think is a great idea and I want to keep it for myself and not telling to everyone to try to get their feedback because they are going to help. People are not going to steal your idea in <laughs> most cases. Of course, you need to be careful with whom you talk to, but speaking to people, telling them what you think of yes. doing, this is going to help. What's your best advice for getting an investor? Just go out there, go to investors even, and don't be scared, talk to people, tell them your idea, tell them your vision, and tell them specifically why your innovation is important. Mm -hmm. there, was, there, there was a very interesting video I watched where they were relying more, not so much on the what, but why are yes. you doing that? So. The TED Talk, the famous TED Talk. Yes, TED Talk. Yes, so with, the, with the three circles. Yes, yes absolutely. I, you know it. Yeah, you yes, know. for sure. I mean, it's world famous. It's extremely important. Tell them why what you're doing is important yes. and they will buy it. How did you get your first paying client? It was actually a contact from within my network during the PhD. Yeah. And then we convinced them that we would be able to do something that by the time we were not able to do. But they said, OK. I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm going to vouch for you, so let's try. And then it turned out to, to work. Okay, very good. Uh, what's the most important characteristic in a team member? I think it's proactivity, and that they want to push the whole idea forward. I think you need all this kind of optimism is important, but the most important thing is to work on whatever is not working and to, to make sure you solve this issue and you move forward. Mm -hmm. So proactivity, I would say. Um, and the last one for this Q&A, um, how do you foster excellent communication in your team? It's a bit sort of a relationship. Yes. So when you are in a relationship, it's very important. To, whenever there is a problem, you talk about it yes. straight away. You need to tell everyone what's working and what it's not working. And it has to work on both sides. So for the good things and for the bad things. And I think that's the best way to keep your team focused and, and make sure that everything works properly. Okay. 
Carlos, now is your moment um, to leave a legacy behind uh, for future generations, giving us a little bit of an expert advice. Okay. Um, keep in mind, we have um, investors out there, we have students okay. out there, a lot of students who watch that, and they're always curious to hear, you know, firsthand what you would advise them or where you feel you are an expert and some piece of wisdom that you want to leave for future generations in the digital world. Okay, so I think I would like to give an advice to especially people who want to start a company or that they are thinking of starting a company. I think it's very important that you look for the right team and that you let yourself be helped. So you need to find this group of people that you can trust completely. So trust is the most important thing within the team that they are going to help you develop your idea. I think it's really important. And Talk about it and don't get married to any idea. So you may think it's really important. Sometimes it's really difficult. So you want to make something work, but just keep a channel open. Yeah. Just to, to listen to advice, even from your own team members. This is going to be very helpful. And this is most likely going to, to make you iterate in a better idea and most likely maybe into a, a startup or a successful startup. So, Carlo, thank you very much for being thank on you. the show today. I really appreciate it. Thank, uh, you. thank you very much, everybody who tuned in today to episode 124 of the Startup Show. And make sure to stay a few more seconds so you see who is on the show next week. Have a great day. Hi, everybody. My name is Jerry Kneister, CEO of Twin. Make sure to tune in next Monday for the show and make absolutely sure that you subscribe to the channel.